Hey, what's going on guys? In this crash course, we're going to take a look at HappyJS, which is a server-side backend framework based on Node.js. Now, it's very, very similar to ExpressJS, if you've ever used that. If you've been following my channel for a while, you probably have. Um, there's, there's some differences. Uh, I'm not going to go over, I'm not going to do a comparison video. I will do that at some point later on, but this is going to be a look at HappyJS, how to set it up, uh, look at some of the features. I'm going to show you how to create routes and how to um, you know send responses or replies we're also even going to look at integration with mongodb so that we can actually uh, you know fetch data from mongo and then output through a route and we're also going to accept a post request so that we can actually add something to mongodb uh, let's see what else in addition to that we're going to be working with templates we're going to use something called vision which allows us to use multiple different template engines we can use for instance ejs um, handlebars which is what we'll be using you can use mustache pug uh, there's a whole bunch of them so it's a really nice technology to learn and like I said if you know Express you shouldn't have any issues at all even if you don't uh, you should be able to follow along I'm gonna make it pretty easy to understand so let's go ahead and get started this video is sponsored by Dev Mountain if you're interested in learning web development iOS or UX design Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time job in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. All right, guys, so before we start getting writing code, uh, I just want to kind of explain to you the, the dev environment I'm using, what software I'm using. I'm not going to go through all the installations. I do have videos showing you how to install this, this stuff separately. Uh, but one thing you're going to need definitely is Node.js, which is a JavaScript runtime. We're going to use this to install HappyJS, among other dependencies. So just go to Node.js.org and go ahead and download it, install it. It's really easy. Now, we're going to be using MongoDB just a little bit, just to give you an example of how to do that. If you are following along, then you will need MongoDB installed. I do have a video called MongoDB in 30 Minutes, which shows you how to get everything set up and running on Windows. I also have videos showing you how to install it on uh, Ubuntu, uh, Linux Ubuntu. All right, now I'm using a, a program called Git Bash for Windows, which gives us a better command line. Um, you don't have to use this, but you can. It's cross-platform. You can use it for Mac, Windows, Linux. Uh, if you want to, you can get that set up. And that's git-scm.com. And then I'm using Visual Studio Code as my editor, uh, mainly for the integrated terminal. And we're actually able to integrate uh, Git Bash with the Visual Studio Code terminal. So that gives us a really nice environment to work in. Okay, so those are the, the, the things that I will be using. Now I have a folder called projects here and I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this happy app. Okay, H-A-P-I. And I just want to open this folder in Visual Studio Code. So let's see, projects, happy app. All right. And then we're going to, um, we're going to have to create a, a file called package.json, which is like a, a manifest file for Node.js applications. And it includes the application name, the version, the dependencies, all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my terminal. And I can do that going to either view integrated terminal, or I can just hit control and then the tilde uh, um, key, which is to the left of the number one. All right. And it opens it right up in this directory. And you'll see I'm actually using git bash here instead of PowerShell, which is the default. If you want to be able to use git bash, all you have to do is go to the settings or preferences settings and it's just a giant JSON file and you can just add this line right here. It's just pointing to uh, the git bash directory or application. So to create a package.json file, we're going to say npm init and it's just going to ask some questions here. You'll see the name happy app is good. So we'll just click enter versions. Good description. We'll say simple happy JS app entry point. I'm going to make this app.js which is like the, the just the main entry point for your application. And then I'm just going to enter through the rest. All right. And if we look at package.json, it'll look something like this. Now to install HappyJS, we just need to do and actually let me clear this out. We just need to do npm install and we want to do dash dash save, which will add it to our package.json file and then just simply write happy H-A-P-I. All right, and that'll install the latest version at this time is 16.4.3. All right, so we have happy installed. Now what we want to do, just going to make this a little smaller. 
I'm going to create uh, app.js, which is our entry file. All right, and then we're going to bring in happy. So let's say const happy equals require happy. Okay, and that'll actually bring in the actually let's make this an uppercase H like that. Okay, so that'll bring in the module and then we want to initialize a server. Okay, so let's say init server. To do that, we're going to create uh, another variable. We're going to call it server and uh, we're going to set this to new happy dot server. Okay, and if you're familiar with express, this is similar to saying const app equals express. And then you, you use this app variable to create all your routes and all of that. Okay, just to let you guys know that, you know, those of you that are familiar with Express. So now that we have that, we need to add a connection. So we take that server value and we say dot connection. And in here takes an object and that's going to take in uh, it's going to take in the port. Which I'm going to make port uh, 8000. But you could do whatever you want. And then the host, which is going to be local host. Okay, it's on our local machine. Now that we hit did that, we want to be able to start the server. Okay, so for that, we can say server dot. Uh, let's see, it's going to be server dot start. Um, start. All right, now this is asynchronous and we're going to be using arrow functions. Okay, now you could do this. You know, function passing an error like that, uh, but we're going to use arrow functions. So we're just going to put whoops. We're just going to put a set of parentheses with error and then an arrow and then our curly braces. Okay, so uh, pretty much the same thing. And then in here, we just want to check for the error. Okay, if there's an error starting the server, then we're just going to throw it. We're just going to display it. So we'll say throw error. Um, why does that have a line if error? Oh, I forgot the H. All right, so throw error. Uh, and then if there is no error, then let's just do a console log. Okay, so we'll say console log and I'm just going to use back ticks in here. Okay, which is just ES6 template uh, template strings server started on or we'll say at And then we can actually use a variable here, this server dot info dot URI. Okay. So let's go ahead and save that. And then down here, let's clear this out. We're going to run node and then the name of the file, which is app.js. So we can just say node app. And we get server started on, on localhost 8000. All right. So let's go ahead and just open up Chrome, close these out. And I'm going to go to localhost port 8000 and we're going to get an error. And the reason we're getting an error is because there's no route. We didn't define a route for the home page. All right. So uh, let's go back and let's define a route. Okay, so we'll say home route. And to do that, we take our server object we have here um, and we're going to say server dot route one second yeah server dot route and we're going to pass in here an object and we're going to define the method that we want to accept which is going to be a get request okay so method and then the path which is going to be slash which represents the home page and then a handler okay now for the handler we're going to use an arrow function remember you could do you know function and so on but we're just going to use an arrow okay and then this is going to get as far as parameters it's going to get a request and it's going to get a reply and this is very similar to express you know usually with express you'll see uh, rec res like that and you can even use those if you want but standard happy is um, request reply okay now in here what we can do is we can take that reply function and we can output something or just send a response back. So let's just send a string that <laughs> hello string. Let's just say hello world. We'll save that. 
Now we're going to have to restart the server and this can get quite uh, quite of a pain in the ass. And there is actually a module you can install called node mon that will allow you to run your server so that you don't have to keep restarting it every every little change you make. So to install that we'll say npm install dash G. This is very important because you want to install it globally so that you can always access it from anywhere and then node mon. All right. And then once you do that, you can just as long as you're in the directory, you can say node mon and it'll start it up. Okay, so let's go check it out. We'll reload and we get hello world. Okay, so what we've done is we've, we've created a, a back end server and we've created one route which ac accepts get requests, you know, to the home page. And then we're sending out a, a response or a reply of hello world. And we can actually put HTML in here if we want as well. So if we did that and we go and reload, you'll see that it actually parsed the HTML. All right, which is cool. So let's see, we can also uh, we can also have dynamic parameters in our URL that we can grab onto. So for instance, let's say uh, right here, we'll say dynamic route. And I'm just going to copy this. And let's say we want this to go to slash user slash. And then this was what we want to be dynamic. So we'll just put name. All right. And then in here. In our reply. Let's say hello. Actually, we'll put a comma there. So we'll say hello, comma, and then we're going to concatenate uh, request dot params dot and then whatever the, the parameter we want. In this case, it's name. That should be a dot. So let's save that and then let's go back to Chrome and let's go to slash user slash Brad and we get hello, Brad. OK, so we can easily grab on to parameters. Now, before we get into, um, you know, templates and stuff, I want to show you how we can how we can set up a, a static folder. If you've ever used Express, you know that you can set, for instance, a public folder and that's where you would put your CSS files or any static HTML pages, things like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is create a folder here called public. All right. And then in there, let's say new file about .html. Now we have to do some stuff for this to work. Actually, I'm just going to put an H1 in here and say about. All right, save that, close it up. Now, in order for this to work, we have to actually install um, another package called inert. Actually, let me pull up the documentation for this. Uh, let's see tutorials. I think it's in here serving static content. Yep. So we actually have to install this inert and then we have to we have to do server dot register require inert and then we put our static stuff inside of there. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to stop the server with control C and let's do npm install dash dash save inert. OK, then we'll start it back up with node mon. And then let's go right below here, right above the server, and let's say static routes. All right, uh, let's see. So like the documentation said, we have to do server dot register. And this is kind of like middleware. So server dot register. And then we want to just require the inert package that we just installed. All right, and then we're going to put a comma here and then this parameter is going to be an arrow function that takes a possible error. OK, and in here, let's check for the error. OK, if there is one, we're just going to throw it. OK, if there is not, then we can create our routes, our static routes. So let's see, we're going to. Should I just yeah, we'll go ahead and just. Copy the home route, paste that in there. Whoops. And let's see, we're going to do slash about. And then in the handler here, we're going to do instead of just reply, we can do reply dot file. 
and then we can just put the location of the, the static file we want to load, which in our case is going to be in public, and it's going to be about.html. All right, and that should work. Let's save it. And let's go to slash about. And there we go. So it loads up a static HTML file. Um, now, if you wanted to do an image, you can do that as well, or not just an image, but any file. So let's go and copy this. And we'll go ahead and paste that in. And this one I want to go to slash image. That'll be the route. And then I just want to load up inside the public folder. We'll have a file called happy dot png which is an image all right um, actually I'm not yeah that should work so let's save that and then I just need to grab that image file so let me see if I can find it I think it's in my sandbox happy app what I usually do guys is when I create these videos I usually create it inside sandbox and then when we start the video we build it in projects just to let you guys kind of know the workflow and you can see I have that that image right here. So if I put that in here, public, paste that in. And now we should be able to go to slash image. And there it is. OK, so we can load, you know, any static assets that we want. Images, CSS files, whatever. All right, so let's go back here. Now I think we'll start to get into stuff that's more useful, and that is using templates or views. Now, there's actually a really nice module called Vision. I don't know the exact URL. Let's go, let's say Happy Vision right here. So let's see, Vision Templates Rendering Plugin Support for Happy JS. Now, Vision is not a specific template engine, so don't think that. It's, it, it's, a, it's a plugin for allowing us to use template engines such as EJS, Handlebars, Jade, Mustache, and Nunchucks. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna focus on Handlebars. That's the one I prefer out of all of these, and it gives us some some example code here. Um, so we need to install Vision with npm install Vision. So let's do that. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So Control C, we'll stop that. We'll say npm install dash dash save Vision. Okay, and then we'll just run node mon. And let's go ahead and get this started. So, uh, let's see, we need to register this middleware. So let's go down, let's go right below the static routes, right above the stat, uh, start server. And let's say uh, vision templates. We'll say server dot register. OK, and then in here we want to just require vision. All right. And just like we did above, we're going to just put an arrow function with a possible error. We'll check for that error. If there is one, then we're just going to throw it. Okay, and then let's say server dot views. And then in here we want to put an object and we want to define engines. And we can have multiple engines, which is really cool. This is going to be an object and we're going to just say HTML. And then we want to require uh, require handlebars, which actually we have to install. Okay, you do have to install the template engine separately. Uh, and I believe that this right here is the file extension you want to use. So we can use .html files and it'll, it'll use handlebars. All right, but let's, uh, let's install that real quick. So I'm going to stop this and we're going to say npm install dash dash save handlebars. Okay, and we'll go ahead and just run, oh, we'll run node mon again. And now we'll go back to this. So we have HTML require handlebars, and then we just want to also define our path to our views or templates folder. So we're going to say double underscore dir name, so the current directory, plus, and then whatever folder we want. A lot of people use templates. I'm going to use views. 
Okay, so that's where all of our templates will go. And that should be it as far as this this middleware. So let's go into uh, our application and create a folder called views. Okay, only because I called it views here. If you want to use templates, you can do that as well. And then let's create a file called index.html. And for now, let's put an H1 and we'll say hello from index. Okay, and then let's go uh, up to our home route, which is right here, which right now is just outputting, you know, it's just outputting an H1. Uh, but what we should be able to do now is let me just comment that out. We should be able to say reply dot view now that we were using vision. All right. And then in here we want the view. We'll say index. Actually, let's just do that. Okay, so we'll save. We'll go back to the home page. Oops. Ah. And we get hello from index. So we're now using handlebars templates in on our happy happy JS server. So you can see this is pretty easy. I think that this is this is uh, easier than express. I don't know about you guys. You can let me know in the comments. I know we're not really getting into the more advanced stuff, so it's a hard comparison. But just by going on this as far as you know registering the middleware and the, the options and stuff and then just being able to to, to use reply dot view up here I think it's pretty easy and I, I definitely plan on using happy JS a lot more in in some videos we're gonna create a rest API we will create a whole application using it um, you know I have that stuff planned down the line now of course when you use a template engine one of the main reasons is because you want to pass in dynamic content so we can easily do that just like with Express and um, you know other template engines we can put a second parameter here which will be an object and let's just say we want to bring in name and we'll just say John Doe alright so we'll save that go back to index HTML and let's say hello from index uh, from and then we'll put in our double curly brace and then name. OK, and this is handlebar syntax. So if we save that and we go back, reload, we get hello from index from John Doe. So we can pass in whatever data we want, whether it's static strings like this or if it's from a database or whatever it may be. One second, guys. Uh, all right, just need to check something. So what else? Um, Let's create a route to tasks. And I want what I want to do is pass in an array of tasks and loop through them in the template. So we'll go right here. And I'm just going to copy this home route. And this will be the tasks route. OK, it's going to be a get request to tasks. And we can get rid of that. And then let's load a template called tasks. And then as far as the data, I just want to pass in tasks and then set that to an array of objects. And each task will just have a text. So we'll say task one. All right. So let's save that and create inside views a new file called tasks.html. We'll put an h1 and we'll just say tasks. Whoops. All right. So let's just see if that actually works, if that route works. So we'll go slash tasks. Good. Now we passed in an array so we can use handlebars to loop through and handlebars I really like it it's really easy to use we can just do number sign each tasks and that each loop and then in here we can just say um, text because that's the value we want and let's just put this inside of a UL And then each one of these will be inside of an ally. All right, we'll save that. Go back, reload. And why isn't that working? 
each tasks my view did I not save that there we go okay so now it's looping through the tasks we passed in and outputting them all right now that's all well and good but usually you don't want to just hard code stuff like that you want it to come from a database so what we're going to do is we're going to implement um, mongoose which is a, a, um, an ORM for MongoDB to communicate with the MongoDB database on our system now like I said if you want to follow along you do have to install MongoDB uh, but let's go ahead and install mongoose so I'm going to just stop this clear this out we'll say and npm install dash dash save mongoose all right let's start up nodemon and let's take a look at the mongoose documentation so we'll say mongoose orm or odm whatever all right, so what we have to do is bring in Mongoose and create a connection like this. All right, um, but I actually want to use a couple options. So I'm going to grab my own version here. Okay, so we'll go up to the top. Let's go right under where we brought in Happy. And we're going to bring in Mongoose. And then we say mongoose.connect. We're going to connect to a database. I'm actually going to change this to, let's say, Happy DB. And then I'm just saying use Mongo client true because that's going to stop some, one of these stupid errors that Mongo has. Um, and then it's asynchronous. It's going to return a promise. So we're saying dot then we're just going to console log. It's connected. If there's an error, it'll console log the error. All right. And um, that should work right off the bat. So let's save it. It restarts. And you might get this mongoose M promise um, warning here. Just ignore that. And then you'll see MongoDB connected. So that's it to connect to a database. Um, now what we want to do is create a model for our tasks. All right, so we're going to put this. We'll just do it right up at the top here. And we'll say create task model. And we'll say const task. Set it to mongoose.model. Okay, and it's going to be task. And then we need a schema. In this case, I'm just going to put an object. It's just going to have a text, which is going to be a string. That's our schema. Now, if you're working with, you know, a real application, you want to create a specific model file and define your schema, all of that stuff. But we're just this is just an example to show you how to work with Happy JS. So now that we've done that, um, let's see, I'm just going to save this and then I'm going to open up my Mongo shell. OK, so I'm going to open up just a standard Windows command line as an administrator and I'm only doing this so we can add some initial data to work with so I'm going to CD I'm going to go into where I have MongoDB installed which is in my C drive MongoDB and then there's a bin folder and that's where the actual Mongo shell is located so I can just say Mongo and that brings us into the shell all right now from here let's say uh, show DBs shows us the the databases that we have okay so what I'm going to do is create a new database by saying use happy DB okay so we switch to happy DB and then I'm just going to create a collection so DB dot uh, create collection and we're going to call this tasks okay and then let's insert a task by saying DB dot tasks dot insert and then it's just going to be an object with a text and we'll just say my task one and that's it okay and if we do db dot task dot find you'll see that it shows us we have that that task it also gives us an object id so that's it that's all i wanted to use the shell for all right now instead of fetching a static list of our static array of tasks let's actually comment this out Okay, instead of doing that, um, what we're going to do is grab it from the database. Okay, now we're going to go not inside of this reply view. Okay, we don't actually, you know what, we want to comment out that whole thing. 
because our reply view is going to be a, it's going to be in the asynchronous call. So right under here, uh, we're going to say let tasks equals task, which is our um, our model that we created above dot find, which is a function to actually find stuff in that collection or in that um, through that model. And it's asynchronous, so we can put function here, but I'm I'm going to use an arrow function, so we're going to say error and task, which will be what's returned if there's no error. Set it to an arrow function. And then in here, let's just do a console.log of tasks. Okay, and we'll test that out. So if we go back to our application, to tasks and reload, nothing will happen here, but if we go back and look in our console, there it is, my task one. All right, so we know that we're getting that. Now all we have to do, let's comment that out. Uh, now all we have to do is say reply dot view, just like we did before. And we want to load the tasks view. And then we just want to pass along the tasks, which is coming from now from MongoDB. So let's save that. Let's go back. And there it is, my task one. So we're now pulling data from the database. So it's pretty damn easy. Um, now, the last thing I want to do is I want to show you how we can make a post request to add a task to MongoDB. So we're going to add a little form here. So let's go back to tasks.html. Uh, let's see, we're going to put, let's put a form. Okay, so the method of this form, I want, whoops, I want to be a post request. And the action is going to go to slash tasks. All right. And then in here, we're just going to put a simple input type text. And we're going to give it a name of text. And let's give it a placeholder. Ah, I keep hitting the stupid tab. I hate this keyboard. It's, it's like I, even, I either have to use this keyboard that sucks that I keep messing up with or I have to use a loud ass mechanical keyboard that people complain about. So I can't win. Um, but someone suggested the um, the MX quiet keys, I think they're called or MX silent keys. I might I might try that because I really love mechanical keyboards. I just hate um, I hate how loud they are. Well, I like it personally, but I know you guys, a lot of you guys don't like it. So let's say I'm getting off off subject. So placeholder will say add task and save. All right, so let's reload now. When we edit the HTML like that, sometimes we have to reload the server. So I'm just going to run node mon again. I don't know why that's kind of strange, but yeah, there we go. So add task. Now it's going to make a post request to slash tasks. So we want to catch that on our back end server. So let's create a route for it. So we'll go right here. Let's actually copy. We'll just grab this, I guess this tasks route. All right, so this will be tasks um, post tasks route, and this will be get tasks route. All right, because it's going to go to the same the same path, just a different um, type. So post, and let's see. In the handler, we're going to get rid of all of this, and we're going to say let text. Now remember, we have to get the value coming from the the form, and we can get that by saying request dot payload dot and then whatever the name of the input was, which in our case was text. If we look at it, it's right here, name text. Now, this is another awesome thing about Happy JS is with Express, you would have to include the body parser and add the middleware, and then you would do, you know, request dot body dot text. But with uh, Happy JS, we don't have to add a body parser or anything. We can just use this payload. All right, there's little shortcuts like that that I really like about Happy JS. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to to uh, insert this. So let's say uh, let new task and we're going to set that to new and then task because remember we made a task model and we just want to insert here an object with a text and it's going to have the value of the text that's being passed in right here. 
Okay, so that just creates it. Now we need to actually save it, which is easy. We can say new task dot save. Okay, so we're going to save and then this is going to be this is asynchronous. So it's going to take an arrow function with an error and then also um, task. Okay, we'll set the arrow function and then all I want to do here is just check for the error. So we'll say if there's an error, then let's just uh, return console dot log and then we'll just log that error. Okay. If there's not, then we just want to redirect back to the tasks page. So we'll say return reply dot redirect dot location and then wherever we want to go, which is going to be the same page tasks. So let's try it out. Okay, so we'll reload and let's say my task to enter. There it is. And if we go to our Mongo shell, and we do a find. Let's actually add on dot pretty, which makes it look a little better. And there it is. So we have my task two. Why didn't that one get pretty? That's weird. Let's try it without it. Fine. Okay. So we have both task one, task two. All right. So I think that's it, guys. Uh, there's a lot more that can be done, but this is an intro getting started type video. It's the first video I've ever done on Happy JS, so I'm not going to make it too complicated. Uh, in the future, we will do a RESTful API. We will do a, you know, a complete application because I do really like this technology. Um, I'm not going to go as far as saying it's better than Express, but I will do some research. I will do some comparison and I will create a video comparing the two and then you guys can decide for yourself. I'm not going to say something is better than the other, you know, in all cases. So thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe. Please leave a like uh, anything you can do. I do have a Patreon account if you guys want to support me directly, even for, you know, a dollar per month. Getting that from enough people gives me the, uh, uh, some really good support. And I eventually just want to do this full time for you guys. All right. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.